All right. We're, our next part that we need to go to is the above grade walls. Now, our particular project has above grade walls and it has partition walls. We do not have below grade walls. Let me explain what a below grade wall or a condition that would be a below grade wall. Let's say that you have a basement, okay? Now, again, this is an abridged edition, so there are some limitations. But if you had a basement and it was partially uh, below grade, you would have to take that wall, and if you had four feet below grade, and four feet above grade, you would have to have two different entries there. You would have to have the above grade dimensions and the below grade dimensions in square footage. Okay, that's just a, just a little hint there, but we're not going to have to deal with that. We are going to be dealing with simply the above grade walls. Now, I want to go over to our plan and the J manual. Our plan says that our exterior walls are wood frame, they have 16 on center studs, R13 insulation with an R2 board insulation on the exterior, the interior finish is a gypsum board, that's sheetrock, the exterior is brick. When I go to my J manual, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this up on my spreadsheet also. We're going to the tab that says walls. You notice it says table 4A construction 12, 13, and 15 above grade walls. Okay, we're looking for that information. I go back to my J manual and I find, are you good there Ricky? Mm -hmm. Okay, that that comes under the 12C-2BW. The description is, and you can look this over, it will tell you what we have here. Okay, frame construction, R13, cavity insulation, R2 board insulation. We are said that we have a brick exterior. Our U value with the wood studs is .081. It is in the group number being that it is a brick exterior, J. If it was siding, it would be D. So let's fill that information in. I need uh, 12C-BW for reference. 12C-2BW. That's just a reference. Okay, the U value was point oh. Eight one point zero eight one. Okay, the group was J. Is that correct? Okay, so we put all that information in here. Yeah, J for brick yeah. and D for siding. Okay, now if you recall, we have a covered uh, porch. Uh, we have a porch on the front side. You notice over there it says shaded wall far to the right. Most of our walls are not shaded, but we do have an exterior wall that is shaded. So we need to put another entry in of 12C-2. B and a W and put a notation that it is shaded. Okay, the U value for that is identical, 0 0.081. The group is still a J. Okay, is it shaded? Yes. So there you see the two entries. We also have a petition wall. Now our petition wall, we need to go to uh, table 4A construction 12 and 13 that is petitions. Now this is going to be a little bit strange. We actually have a carport there, but it has a roll-up door or a, a uh, door that we can uh, close. So I'm going to have to find that particular scenario. And this may take me just a minute because I didn't 
think I was ready for that. Alright, here we show a two garage, and I'm kind of jumping a, uh, around a little bit, but this is a, gets a little bit exciting, if you will. I've done some homework, so to speak, and I find out that here is my garage. Here, here is uh, an example of a garage. Now, where this comes into play is when we look at the petition temperature differential for heating and the uh, petition temperature differential for cooling. Our U values here are going to be the same. Okay, we're going to call this thing a 12 C dash 2 B and we know that it is a petition wall. Okay, our U value, if I'm not mistaken, I may have to go back and check myself on this one. Point Oops. Point zero eight one. Okay. Now, in order to be able to get the temperature differential of this particular area, I need to use the J manual recommendation. Okay. It tells me that for the winter, which is the heating, I need to use the heating dry bulb with no adjustment. Do y'all remember? That is table one, heating dry bulb with no adjustment. You remember what the temperature differential was on the J1 criteria of location. Let's go take a look. There it is, 48. I go back to my walls and I put that temperature differential of 48. Now the cooling, we're going to need to know what that temperature is too, it's a 15 degree differential, but we can't just use that. Okay, we go back to the walls under partition, carport type scenario, and we find out that we are to use table 1A cooling dry bulb plus 17 degrees. If my math is right, 17 plus 15 is how much? 32? I hope. <laughs> okay, so I put a 32 degree temperature in there. There it is. Okay, our, our temperature differential. Now, I can go to my J1 form once again and I can figure my above wall dimensions. Now this, this is a little tricky. We can divide this up into sections or we can do it all under one heading. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring my different walls on my sheet. I have the regular walls and then I have the shaded wall and last but not least I'm going to go ahead and put in the petition wall. Okay, now I need to come up with the square footage. Like I said, now this is going to be a little bit tricky. The reason is I need to take the linear feet of the exterior walls. Okay, we're doing a block load. If I go back and I look at my diagram, now I've, I've already done a little more work to help us out. I'm going to lay this one down here. You'll find out that my exterior wall for the entire structure that falls up under this category is going to be a 50 foot on the north side, 32 on the south side, and only 16 feet uh, excuse me, on the east side, and only 16 feet on the south side. This covered porch changes things. So we need to add the linear feet of 50, and I'm going to go over here to my cheat sheet, 50 plus 32 plus 16, which is uh, the linear length, 98, times, well, how tall are my walls? I'm told that I have an 8-foot ceiling. We're only worried about the, con the, the area between the condition space and a temperature differential. So we use the 8 foot as a multiplier to get our square footage of 784, but we must subtract the windows and doors associated with that. We have 48 square foot of windows associated with those walls, 18 square foot of doors, 
which gives us 718. Now I did a little math before we got up here, and yes, I probably made a mistake or two, but yeah, I think you get the concept. So I put in the 718. Is that correct? Hope I put that right. All right. Now, I said that I had a covered porch on the front. Its dimension is 24 foot long. Again, it's an 8 foot ceiling, which gives us 192, but we must subtract the windows and doors associated with that wall, which leaves us a square footage of 148. So I put the 148 for the square footage of the covered walls. Now, last but not least, I have a petition wall. Petition wall between the carport Last but not least, our petition walls, we've already got the criteria in there for it. I've already done the, the uh, calculations and I come, to, I, I come up with uh, 318 uh, square feet. Remember, I did have to take the total petition wall and subtract the door number three from it to be able to get that information. That has uh, concluded all of our exterior walls. All of our walls that have a temperature differential, including the petition walls, will be moving into ceilings next.